Hey guys, and how's it going? No, seriously, just channeling a little bit of Musty One there. Uh, welcome to episode two of the uh, the Honda project. This morning we're going to uh, try and get it running, uh, or at least starting. Uh, this engine has had some work done before. It has a new uh, barrel um, and piston. Given the old barrel and piston that sits over there, I can see new gaskets as well. So hopefully that's been done correctly. And uh, obviously the it's missing the fuel tank at the moment, but um, I think the other fuel tank on the other unit will fit. So that's good. We won't bother with the fuel tank at the moment. Let's just see if we can get it started first. There's a little bit of wiring to repair up on the um, uh, the wiring from the solenoid. Uh, so we'll probably start with that. So I get told I don't talk enough during my videos to tell you what I'm doing. So uh, I'll try and rectify that with this. Um, wireless microphone uh, hopefully the fans not too loud um, it's really hot here this morning in the territory so uh, I need to have some airflow going here what am I who am I kidding it's always hot in the territory for my American friends the Northern Territory uh, as its name suggests is at the top end of, uh, of uh, Australia and it is in the subtropics so we don't actually get a winter here uh, we get two seasons effectively uh, wet season and dry season and uh, we're currently in wet season So I'm going to bypass this um, this weather pack connector because it's kind of stupid really. It goes from the loom weather pack connector and then into these uh, bullet connectors and then into the solenoid. Um, because the wires are actually broken or cut almost at the weather pack, I'm just going to cut them off and uh, hook it straight up to the, uh, the bullet connectors. Typical for the age of, of these things and the fact that it seems to be that in the territory these poor old quads just sit outside in the weather all year round. Um, uh, the wiring, especially on this part, looks like it's uh, got a fair bit of corrosion down into the copper wiring. If I was designing a, uh, a quad bike, I would build it far much, far more like a, uh, a boat that is designed for salt water, in that it would have tinned marine wire. As I, don't, I don't know whether you can see that or not. Very, very dull and nasty looking. But. It'll serve our purpose for what we're trying to achieve today, is which is just seeing if it does run. As you can see there, that, that wire is corroded and not far off breaking off.
don't exactly understand the purpose of that plug. It's an isolator. Anyway, that should be okay for our test at least. I guess that solenoid's supposed to mount somehow in there. I don't like the fact that it's nice to look on bracket beside it. be redesigning that if it does work so anyway let's get a battery and hook her up really a bad height for my back. I need one of those uh, lift units like Musty uses. Now here's a, uh, a hint for you. Um, always hook up your battery positives. This includes on cars as well first. The reason being is when you're doing up the battery terminal, if you were to short out to the frame, you won't get any sparking because the frame's not earthed yet. Let's grab a 10mm spanner for that. Similarly, whenever you're disconnecting a battery, disconnect the earth first. It's much safer. No sparkies, that's good. Power switch is off. And of course, if you were to short out to the frame, your spanner whilst doing the earth or negative of the battery nothing happens it's the same potential I've seen many a spanner welded in place uh, over my years never been one of them of course uh, the real danger with that is a spanner will transmit or or allow massive current to flow which often will cause the battery to explode if you're anywhere near a battery exploding you will be covered in acid and you will be in hospital and if it gets in your eyes you will be blind I'm not putting a Debbie Downer on it but that's just the way it is Radio, we have a battery, we have a solenoid, whether or not that works, another question. Let's clear a bit of this crap out. Oh, we got lights. That's a good thing. 20,279 kilometers. Got a headlight on there too. Yes, with the headlight switch. One headlight works. So 
bit of force sanding horn. Okay. No clicking going on. So we got a micro switch here. All right, I'm gonna put you back in the cradle, and we're gonna start seeing if we can just get a starter motor to turn over. Okie dokie. So, neutral safety switch was uh, what was causing the no um, turnover. Right, so we have turnover. for our American friends. you got to love the way we do things in Australia. This is uh, Newlon, start you bastard. It's just a pretty laconic Australian. All right, here we go. One thing this uh, machine is missing is a choke cable. Alright, I reckon we set up a bit of fuel, get the fire extinguisher out. So I've rigged up a uh, little bottle of fuel in lieu of the fire extinguisher.
got a couple of uh, leaking. Actually, I don't think the needle and seat is seating at the moment because there's fuel leaking out everywhere. is typical when the uh, needle and seat are not closing off. Got a nice little puddle of fuel inside the garage here. That's a bad thing. And you can see it's dripping from the overflow there from the fuel bowl. So uh, next step, pull the carby. Right now, starting with the airbox. breather. Over a little bit over this way. Trying to remove the carby from the what they call the boot, which is a flexible coupling. It joins the carby to the cylinder the engine. As they get older the flexible boots become not so flexible and are quite easy to to break as well. They seem to be a consumable part. There's an awful lot of them available on eBay and Amazon. <laughs> really don't want to bust this one because I don't want to spend any money unless I have to. Can't be this one. It's got an electrical connection. Lots of perished hoses. Can't see that. Perished hoses everywhere. That's okay. No biggie. They're just vents. Radio. Uh, 
this is the non-existent clutch uh, choke cable, which I noticed um, the cable is actually broken, but the other the other quad has a um, has a functional choke cable, so that'll be one of the things that comes off onto this. I think. All right, let's get some spanners and get this disconnected. might just uh, move you over so that you can get a better view. Ah, sweat running down in my glasses. The trials and tribulations of living in the territory. the bottom end of the choke cable is still here. Tiny little needle. That one out of the road. Not exactly sure what this switch is for. Plugs, so I guess we'll disconnect it. There's the last of the fuel pissing out. Oh boy. It's interesting. There's something I haven't seen before on these type of carburetors. Is this a primer? It certainly looks like it goes down into the fuel bowl. It don't move much. So we've got a stubborn screw here. Um, that's going to be interesting because I can't get a decent hit on it. Maybe somebody can tell me why are screws in carburetors so hard to get out. Oh, that was bad. Uh, idle control. And now just a 10 mil. Out 
and Cubby's free. Pissing fuel. Let's sit that back in there so I don't lose it. Alright, let's clean up the workbench and uh, pull this thing apart. Alright, here we are on the bench. That was fairly obvious. A pair of pliers would have been a good start. Alright, this is the overflow from the fuel bowl. Hopefully you can hear me over the fan. I have to have the fan going. Just cooking otherwise. Now, will I need the impact screwdriver? Take that off before I break it off. One. Two. Three. Four. Oh, four from four. Make sure these are the same size as I take them out. Often they're not. Three from three, the same size. I'm in. Ooh. Get a rusty looking goop in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's a bit varnishy. It stinks as well. Fairly good sign when you. Oh, main jet. <laughs> um, fairly good sign. No, it's not a good sign. It's actually a really bad sign when you smell the fuel. If the sm if the fuel does not smell good, as in like normal fuel, uh, then you know you've you've got a problem. Okay, so it's a bit hard to see, but the needle and seat is actually actuating but this here is a concern oh, wow I've never seen one of those pins come out so easily so surprisingly the needle is clean And the seat looks pretty good too.
and that's completely blocked. Okay, let's get a little wire brush and I'm tempted to throw it in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, but I don't have a a gasket kit for it. And again, I'm trying to be smarter with the uh, Honda build as opposed to the Bear, where I bought a whole heap of things. Yeah, let's just give it a general clean up. That's a completely different design to the Mitsutoyo. Mitsutoyo, whatever it is, brand on the Yamaha. Anyway, we'll clean it up. Assuming that's a priming bulb, but it doesn't move much. I don't know whether to risk taking it off, damaging the uh, seal, which of course, as I said, I'm going to seal kit for it. Don't be handy, use gloves when doing brake plane stuff. I'm still recording. That's interesting looking gunk. Wow. So it is a diaphragm. piece actually cracked out of there. Little flange. It's certainly a candidate for uh, a date with the ultrasonic bath and a carby kit but again what we're trying to achieve is just to get this thing to run. Or at least start and run a little bit. Okay, 
least that does now move under spring pressure. bits of crud in there that we need to get out. Righto, fuel bowls much cleaner without resorting to the uh, ultrasonic bath. Give it a little bit of love down in here. on my tiny needles. That brake clean is going straight through it, so that'll have to do. Okay, needle and seat not working. Okay, I'm going to reinstall it and see if we can get it started. That. Plug, which I don't know what it's for. Alrighty, oh, let's get this carby back on here. <laughs>
choke cable. Mm. It's not too hard to get off. I think I'll go and get it off the other machine. Nope, maybe not. The other choke cable is busted. So we'll just screw this one in for the time being. Radio. Make sure we got some fuel there. Give that the primer a couple of little tickles. Not exactly sure what it does or if it does anything. Fuel in the bowl. Just fire extinguisher at the ready. Bit of oil on the uh, on the exhaust there. Pop. 
John. It runs. Whew, a little bit of warmth to it. Radio. Well, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Uh, did what I wanted to do was to get it running, so that's good. And uh, yeah. So now I guess we start looking at other bits and pieces and uh, see how we go. Cheers. Make sure you like, share and subscribe and uh, look forward to episode three. See ya.